Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. All glory, honor, and worship are due the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Today's video will serve as an introductory one to the Doctrines of the Early Church playlist of this YouTube channel. And as you can see, it's entitled, Why Trust the Teachings of the Early Church? That beautiful icon to the left, we'll see another one at the end, which is more of a kind of a modern version of it, not as many individuals in the background, is if you look up front, it says Ia Ecumeniki Synodos, the Ecumenical Synod. That represents the first ecumenical council in Constantinople, Nicaea, where a lot of church doctrine, especially as it concerned to the refutation of Arianism, was uh, went over. Let us begin. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 to 19. This is Christ speaking primarily to Peter. Other disciples were obviously by reading the scripture were present. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Notice the future tense of these promises. Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 to 20. Now Christ is speaking directly to all the disciples. Fairly I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall, future tense again, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall, future tense again, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, future tense, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven, future tense. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Questions. Did Jesus Christ promise Peter, and then later the rest of his disciples, that they would in the future together establish proper doctrine for the church and make important decisions for the church, with his assistance and that of his Father, of course? Yes. Could Jesus Christ ever lie? No, never. Could Jesus Christ ever be mistaken? No, never. Let's continue. John chapter 14, verse 26. Again, Christ speaking to his disciples. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will, future tense, send in my name, he shall, again, future tense, teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Questions. Did Jesus Christ promise his disciples that in the future the Holy Spirit would lead them to all truth, bringing all things he spoke to their remembrance? He sure did. We just read it. Could Jesus Christ ever lie? Of course not. Could Jesus Christ ever be mistaken? Never. Could the Holy Spirit ever fail? Ever fail? Excuse me. Never. Let's continue. John chapter 20. Verses 21 through 23. This is Christ after his resurrection and after his return from the Father. Again, speaking to the disciples, Thomas was not present. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Notice now it's present tense. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Again, present tense. So there were future promises which are now happening. Questions. Did Jesus Christ promise his disciples that after his resurrection, that they would now together establish doctrine for the church with the assistance of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Could Jesus Christ ever lie? Never. Forgive me for pushing the point, but re realize this. Could Jesus Christ ever be mistaken? Of course not. Could the Holy Spirit ever fail? Never. Let's finish it off with some uh, epistle, the uh, second letter of St. Paul to St. Timothy, chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, and faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. Same epistle now, chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Realize all of this is scriptural, which means it must be true, right? Questions. Did St. Paul teach St. Timothy proper doctrine? He sure did. 
Was the Holy Spirit involved with this? Of course. Did St. Paul fail in his task? Of course not. St. Timothy told likewise to preach proper doctrine to other faithful men. He was. We just read it. Do you believe St. Timothy failed in this task? I don't. Again, there's another more modern form of an icon of the First Ecumenical Council, the Synod in Nicaea, Constantinople. In the center is Constantine the Great, the emperor. To his right and left, in that curved seating structure, there's bishops. That, that Those outfits with the cruciform uh, designs are bishops. Behind him on a little throne there, you'll see that's actually the Christ Emmanuel with the IC to the left and the XC to the right. And the halo would be the on statement. You can't see it with this resolution. That represents, again, Christ Emmanuel, right? Christ is with us. God is with us. Remember Christ's promise. If more than two are gathered in my name, I will be there in the midst. Well, there he is in the midst, isn't he? To the right there in the background are a bunch of bishops in their bishops' uh, uh, uniforms. To the left of the uh, Christ Emmanuel, you see a military guard of some kind. To his left, it looks like there's possibly one of the three bishops. And then on the far left there, there's three other saintly individuals not wearing bishops' clothes. I don't know who they are. And then to the far left there, right off the edge of the, the image, you see an individual not with a halo wearing some kind of turban. So these four individuals, it would be interesting to know who they are. I, I, I don't know. If anyone out there does know, that would be wonderful if you could inform me in the uh, comment section, please. Beneath is the first Jehovah's Witness Arian. And again, many things were determined at this first ecumenical council, but most of it was intended to refute the heresy that was Arianism. You know, which is let you know is still with us today in the modern day in Jehovah's Witnesses. They might argue that, but I wouldn't. Regardless, Arian taught, like the Jehovah's Witnesses teach, that Christ was not divine; he was a creation of God, which obviously is false and not biblical and blasphemy. So the point of this video is again, it's a it's an introduction to this portion of the YouTube channel, the Early Doctrines of the Church. If you think about it, Christ can't lie. Christ can't be mistaken, the Holy Spirit can't fail. We know that the church was unified, first century, second century, third century, fourth century, time of this uh, uh, ecumenical synod, even into the fifth century. Then it started breaking apart. Coptic Orthodox broke off. The Assyrian Church of the Eats broke off. And then later, in the 11th century, 1054, the, what would be later termed the Roman Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox churches had their great schism. So I would argue that since Christ can't lie, Christ can't be mistaken, the Holy Spirit can't fail, if the church universal held beliefs that they all believed in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth centuries, don't those beliefs have to be true, right? And that's what we'll be getting into in this uh, uh, playlist. So uh, I, I, I pray I spoke truth, I obviously, and I obviously interpreted scripture correctly, all truth, comes from God through the Holy Spirit. It's not my truth. If I spoke anything incorrectly, if I interpreted anything correctly, forgive me. I didn't intend to, obviously. And again, I hope truth enters your heart and mind and anything I spoke incorrectly does not find rich soil in your heart, mind, and soul. Lord willing, we'll meet again and God bless you all.